This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the place to go for all of your website needs. Hop over to www.squarespace.com slash hue for a free trial. And if you like what you see and want to move forward, receive 10% off your first order by using the discount code hue at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. It all depends on one's frame of reference, one's point of view. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and today, after waiting more than half a year to get my hands on one, shooting with it, and making prints from it, like these, although I wish I had printed bigger, I'm working on it, I can, finally, give you my take on Hasselblad's $8200 102 megapixel X2D 100C. Although I should, so I will, preface this by saying, that it isn't easy for me to be wholly objective, both because of the company's storied past and my own relationship with it. Which is to say that Hasselblad has precisely the kind of heritage which appeals to me. It is the kind of company I want to see thrive well into the 21st century. And although no money has ever exchanged hands, the folks at Hasselblad were wonderfully supportive of us as we first launched our Streets of New York workshops donating classroom space for us at their AbFab New York Experience studio in NoHo. That is, until COVID hit in 2020 and the entire city had to shut down. The thing of it is, I need to keep this short because otherwise it will become very, very long. I know. I just threw out the 4,000 plus word script I've been working on for the last week, and I don't feel like going through that again. So let me cut to the chase. This probably won't be as short as I'd wish. One, no newsflash. And I think this is fair to say. The X2D is a work of industrial art capable of extraordinary imagery. It's easy, in fact, for me to say that the combination of A, the X2D's exceptional build quality, exceptional sensor, exceptional menu system, which is best in the business, B, Best in the business, color science, because yes, HNCS, Hasselblad's natural color science, is a thing. C, class-leading in-body image stabilization, really robust articulating rear screen. D, the best of its XCD lens line, hold that thought for just a moment. And E, the mere presence of autofocus compared to, say, my Leica M11, hold that thought, makes the X2D 100C the highest performance capture tool I have ever had in hand. Two, the X2D is something to enjoy just by having it literally in hand or up to your eye. Hold that thought too. Three, the best XCD lenses. And for now, I'd call them the 21 F4, 45 F4P and 93.2 are about as good as it gets. Second only in my experience to like his Aposumicron SL line, maybe a couple of Sony's very best GM primes. Although apologies hold that fourth thought as well. 
I know, I'm over my previously agreed limit of three, sorry. Wait, no, that's not right. You don't have to hold that very first thought anymore, so we're good, right? But, four, it turns out that one's use cases and priorities may stymie much of the X2D's potential because A, the autofocus implementation, once one moves beyond the relatively leisurely genres of landscape, architecture, and studio work, portrait, product, and, and or most, if not all, fashion photography, because you got to have IAF for those spinning models when you're shooting at F00.7, is, as of this recording, just, it's just not competitive with any other current relevant autofocus system on the market of which I'm aware, even with the integration of phase detection technology in the X2D. It's slow. It's not as sure as it should be, although it is better than the autofocus system found in the X1D Mark II. The autofocus mode is limited to either a small box or a slightly less small box, and that's it. There's no single field AF, no multi field AF, no IAF, no true pinpoint AF, no tracking AF, no zippity doodah day AF, no joystick or D pad to position the focus area in any event. You can futz with the two control rings, but you can, and I did, set a portion of the rear screen to serve as a touchpad to achieve the same thing. It's still not great. On the other hand, this would all be fine. Great. Awesome. I'd love no futz autofocus. Don't get me started. If only it worked consistently with alacrity and certainty, but it doesn't in the X2D for anything beyond the genres I've just mentioned, making it a tantalizingly, frustratingly challenging option for street photography, which for those of you who do not know, Claudia or me, is our particular jam, especially with all of that resolution and the rest of the X2D's goodness. B. Then there's operational speed, which is to say, also slow, from startup time to shutter lag, burst rates, location, and haptics of secondary controls, Again, making it frustrating for some of our non-urban landscape street work. And finally, C. Hasselblad has introduced a third lens line, currently consisting of the 3700 buck XCD 3855 F2.5 Vs, that strikes me as an effort to find a different balance among price, profit, build quality, size, weight, ergonomics, autofocus performance, and optical performance than either the original XCD launch lenses back in 2016, the $2,700, $45, and $3,200, $93.2 I just mentioned, or the lightweight, compact, and relatively inexpensive P-Line, thus far represented solely by the excellent at the price, as I recall in the X1D2, $1,100, 45F4P I also mentioned earlier, which would also be fine. Great. I quite like the lightweight, relatively small size, fast and silent autofocus and the industrial design of this new V-Line, especially their implementation of the clutch for manual focus, if they were as optically performant as like is admittedly even more expensive, but benchmark setting in my book, Autofocusing Aposumicron SL Line. Then they'd be a bargain. Excellent as they are, these newer lenses are not at that level, not quite to the level of my favorite earlier XCD lenses either. Maybe not quite at the level of the best Nikon and Sony full frame primes, for that matter. Perhaps not the latest and best Sigma DGD ends. In other words, it seems to me that Hasselblad's strategy is to split the workload for ultimate image quality between the sensor and the optics, which on the face of it makes sense, right, when you first hear it, but to my way of thinking means not getting the most out of either, blunting the appeal for what we do anyway of the 102 megapixels and their best in the business color science. Which leaves us where precisely, even as I failed to cover high ISO performance, Hasselblad's Focus 2 software, relative size, weight, and performance, price compared to other competitors, along with a number of other things I would have covered had I stayed with that 4,000 plus word script. Let me wrestle this beast of a video to ground before it spirals out of control. Three generations into their mirrorless adventure, Hasselblad has pulled out all the stops with the X2D and it is a lovely camera, well suited to architecture, landscape, studio work. It is unclear to me, however, 
other than for my own urban landscape work, printed, in fact, at five feet or more on the long side. How much these genres truly benefit from all of that resolution? If it's clear to any of you guys, please, I'd love to read your take in the comments section. When I use the X2D with the best of the XCD lenses and can slow down enough to let the autofocus do what it can do, I am delighted by the result at Mongo print sizes. Viewed at closer than normal viewing distances or when cropping the crap out of an image, the X2D exceeds what our 60 megapixel Leica M11, Leica Q3, or Sony A7R5 can do. And because of its color science, it exceeds what Fujifilm's GFX100 series can do as well. All of which taken together is the highest praise. Yet, bring the print down to a mere mortal size, say 17 by 22, and look, 99% of us, 99% of the time, will not notice a difference. I'd venture to say that none of us would notice the difference in even smaller prints, again, unless one had already cropped the crap out of an image. I am thus less sanguine that even in this third generation, Hasselblad is still playing catch-up, still trying to find the right balance in its product mix for optimal performance and the value for its customers and the company itself. Balance across all of the components is the key. The cost of playing catch-up, I think, is that, gorgeous as it is, with all the image quality potential it has, the X2D system is vulnerable to competition from the few remaining players in the mid-tier digital medium format space, obviously, and most especially, Fujifilm's keenly priced, well-specced, and performant 5500 GFX 100 S, and recently reduced to 6500 from 10,000 OG GFX 100. Although that system is larger, heavier, and suffers from a relatively pedestrian industrial design, and by comparison, an utterly dastardly menu system. But I think the X2D is even more vulnerable to competition from full-frame cameras. As are all digital medium format camera systems across all genres, never mind the obvious sports and wildlife categories. In fact, I am convinced of this. That's because beyond the differences in price, weight, operational speed, autofocus, and lens selection, all accruing to the benefit of the full frame segment, the gap between full frame and medium format image quality in the digital era is dramatically smaller than it was in the film era, starting with something as simple as a much smaller difference in relative capture surface area. While the X2D's medium format digital sensor surface area is 1.7 times that of today's full frame sensors, 70% larger, the surface area of classic 6x6 or 2 and a quarter square medium format film is more than double that at 4.2 times 35 millimeter film, which in turn is the same size as today's full frame. Differences in dynamic range and high ISO performance, especially when equalizing for depth of field, are also minimal. As for the ongoing trajectory of those differences, right, full frame is where the lion's share of momentum and money are going. The momentum and money show up in the relative speed at which full-frame sensors and lenses are evolving, and the accelerating economic advantage full-frame lens has over medium format by virtue of dramatically higher unit volume over which to spread R&D and manufacturing costs. Right now, for example, there are four full-frame 60-megapixel autofocusing cameras on the market of which I'm aware. Sigma's $2,500 FPL, Sony's $3,200 A7R 4A and $3,900 A7R 5, and Leica's just announced $6,000 Q3, all of which are smaller, lighter, faster, and have better autofocus. In short, they are all better balanced, better able to make the most from what they've got, with two of them, the A7R 5 and Q3, having astoundingly better autofocus, the A7R5's autofocus just next level compared to everything. Although only the Q3 has the industrial design, build quality, and heritage to match or exceed that of the X2D, making it, yeah, perhaps only for those of us who can afford it, and only for the moment, the best balanced camera in the industry. This is why, in addition to our other gear, we own the Q3 and the A7R5. They are so good, they have impacted how we shoot on the street. Of course, there are a bunch of other cameras in the 40 to 50 megapixel mix, from the $6,500 full frame 50 megapixel Sony A1 down to the $1,700 APS-C 40 megapixel Fujifilm X-T5, and in between a number of full frame cameras hovering around 45 or 48 megapixels, including like a $7,000 SL2, Nikon C7 II, and Z8. 
Panasonic's $3,700 S1R Canon's recently reduced $3,400 R5, all of which have better autofocus than the X2D and much wider, deeper, and accessibly priced lens ecosystems suitable for all genres of photography with video capability too, although Canon's is definitely the weakest of those from a prime lens perspective. In any event, it's a tough competitive landscape. In the end, it comes down to this. Let me wrap it up, summarize. The X2D is capable of the best image quality I've ever experienced. It is an object of desire, truly unique in the industry. But Claudia and I are fortunate enough to own and shoot with precisely the gear we want, and no camera manufacturer has been standing still. Three and a half years ago, I thought of the X2D's predecessor, the X1D Mark II, as essentially an EVF-equipped higher resolution like M, the only other camera in the same ballpark for heritage, build quality, lens quality. But the Hassi had even better color science. I found this intriguing. The autofocus only had to be better than what one could do with the manual focus M. The difference between the M10's 24 megapixels and the X1D Mark II's 50 was significant. And with that new 45P, 1100 bucks, a lens I liked very much, the Hassi was a relative bargain compared to the M10 with even the non-APO, non-aspherical Summicron 50F2. Yet within months, Leica would release their 40 megapixel M10R and in the years following the announcement of the X1D Mark II, the full frame segment exploded. Today, I can't help but think of the X2D 100C not as an alternative to any M, including my M11, but instead with the XCD 38 f2.5, a higher resolution ILC alternative to our Leica Q3. That is to say, an exemplar of our philosophy of keeping our kit as small and light as possible by using megapixels instead of more glass. But the X2D is bigger, heavier, slower, far less sure-footed when it comes to autofocus, and far more expensive than our Q3. Alternatively, one could think of the X2D as a higher resolution, articulating screen equipped, marginally smaller, marginally lighter, but still way slower and far less sure-footed autofocusing alternative to the Leica SL2, with little to no price advantage once one considers the breadth and depth of the L-Mount Alliance lens ecosystem. Still, if you love Hassi color science, I get it. Love the X2D's industrial design, I get that. Share the same high opinion of Hassi's best XCD lenses. Appreciate the big, robust articulating screen, the one terabyte of permanent internal SSD storage, the new EVF. You get the idea, I get it all. And your use cases, priorities, and budget align. The X2D can be quite compelling. With all of this said, however, we end here. I think it fair to assert that for the X2D to be a thoroughly compelling alternative to the sharpest competitors out there, a compelling value for the most demanding shooters among us, Hasselblad needs to dramatically improve the X2D's autofocusing effectiveness, speed, and operational speed generally, and with equal alacrity, update a no compromise lens catalog with the industrial design, speed, silence, yet smaller size and lighter weight of the newest V lenses and the optical performance of the best older XCD lenses. I think they just might make it happen. Although, hey, as is, I think the X2D is exceptionally compelling and an absolute steal compared to phase one's recently announced $62,500 manual focusing only, no viewfinder, no IBIS equipped XC, even with the XC's larger surface area, even higher resolution sensor. Just saying. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From custom domains to beautiful websites using their easily customizable templates that you can have up and running in minutes, e-commerce, email and email marketing, SEO, analytics and scheduling, Squarespace does it all and has done it for us for the last six years. 
If you are a small to mid-sized business in any industry, Squarespace is the place to go for all of your website needs. Hop over to www.squarespace.com slash you for a free trial. And if you like what you see and want to move forward, receive 10% off your first order by using the discount code Hugh at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, join the conversation in the comment section below because this is an exceptional audience. If you'd like help with a portfolio review, gear selection, finding or honing your artistic voice, sign up for a one-on-one -on -one mentoring video called via Zoom at 3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, please consider supporting our work by using the no cost to you affiliate links down below, sending us coffee money via PayPal, or most especially joining us on Patreon links down below as well. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it.